Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our biochemistry playlist. In previous videos, we talked about DNA and RNA. We talked about purines versus pyrimidines. We talked about nucleosides versus nucleotides. And we talked about telomeres and centromeres. Today, it's time to delve into DNA replication. How can we replicate your DNA so that we can replicate your cell, i.e. cell division? DNA replication happens here in the S phase of the cell cycle. The actual mitosis or division of one cell into two cells happens here at the M or the mitosis phase. S for synthesis of DNA, M for mitosis. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. Just like the computer code is on the computer, the genetic code is on your DNA. What's the function? To send a message. To do what? To make proteins, like insulin. We need to translate that message first from meaningless codons into meaningful proteins. And there you go, the central dogma. When you make another copy of DNA, it's called DNA replication. This is DNA synthesis, which happens in the S phase of the cell cycle. DNA to RNA is transcription. If you go the other way, it's reverse transcription. And then if RNA becomes protein, this is translation, also known as protein synthesis. Before RNA gets translated, it needs to exit the nucleus and go to the cytoplasm. Can DNA exit the nucleus and go to the cytoplasm? No, because otherwise the DNA will get degraded outside in a second. Okay, why did the RNA leave then? Why not stay inside? Because your ribosomes and your endoplasmic reticulum are outside. Where is my DNA? It's in the nucleus mainly, but that's not the only site. We have some DNA in the mitochondria, plants have some DNA in the chloroplast. Remember that you inherited your DNA from mommy and from daddy, half and half. But you inherited your mitochondrial DNA only from mommy. Mnemonic mitochondria is maternal. In order for me to work on DNA, it needs to be relaxed like this, exposed to the enzymes and proteins that will help me replicate my DNA. I cannot work on a DNA that is wrapped gazillion times on itself and on histones, such as heterochromatin. I cannot work with heterochromatin, but I can work on the euchromatin. The difference between euchromatin and heterochromatin was discussed in previous videos. In a nutshell, the euchromatin is relaxed, it is accessible, which means transcribable and also replicatable, and because it's relaxed, it appears lighter under the microscope. DNA is the classic anti-parallel structure. The nucleotide is made of triple structures. What do you mean? I mean sugar, I mean phosphate, and nitrogenous bases. Complementary base pairing because A binds with T and G binds with C. A binding with T requires two hydrogen bonds, G binding with C requires three hydrogen bonds. That's why the GC is more stable. Mnemonic, JC, stability. What's the centromere? It's the central piece. The central piece of what? The central piece of your chromosome between the two sister chromatids. How come the centromere keeps both sister chromatids connected and linked together? Because the centromere is made of what? Heterochromatin, highly condensed, highly repetitive, high JC content. JC equals stability, so that the two sister chromatids remain connected. Please understand this, the two sister chromatids remain connected throughout the S phase of the cell cycle, throughout the process of DNA replication. They will split, however, during the M phase of the cell cycle, hashtag mitosis. Only when the mitotic spindle pulls them apart, 
does the centromere split into two halves or two halves next telomeres telo means the end or the purpose as in greek philosophy the telos and the logos and the mythos etc too much jordan peterson on this channel did you know that dna replication cannot extend all the way to the end of the chromosome that's why the end of the chromosome contains dna that will not be replicated that's why with each cycle your telomere shortens because it's not replicated so your telomere i.e the end piece of your chromosome will keep getting shorter and shorter and shorter with each subsequent cell division unless you have a telomerase which is a reverse transcriptase enzyme which will make dna from rna this dna will preserve your telomeres or synthesize new ones to be specific i.e the telomerase will prevent the shortening of your telomeres to prevent the loss of genetic material this is awesome two notes note number one the telomere exists at the three prime end of your dna only eukaryotes need to synthesize telomeres Prokaryotes do not because they do not live as long. With each cell injury, which is followed by cell division, trying to regenerate and repair your tissue, your telomeres will shorten. Hashtag senescence. You're growing older because of more cell division, i.e. more shortening of your telomeres. But telomerase will save the day in eukaryotes, just like you. And in the last video, we said what's going to happen without telomerase. As you see here, I'm shortening my telomeres and I'm aging. Take it to pa, death. But thanks to telomerase, I am preserving the telomeres, which means my cells will keep dividing and dividing and dividing, growing and growing and growing. Take it too far, neoplasia. As Dr. Thomas Sowell said, there are no solutions in life, only trade-offs. And telomerase is a classic example. DNA synthesis, i.e. DNA replication, happens during the S phase of the cell cycle. The synthesis phase. Synthesis of new DNA. But the cell division itself, dividing of one cell into two separate cells, happens during the M phase, mitosis. During the S phase, both sister chromatids remain connected and linked in the middle, hashtag centromere. But during the M phase, the centromere will split, hashtag mitotic spindle. Please pause and review. Today's topic is DNA replication. We're focused on the S phase of the cell cycle. Please pause and review the central dogma. Let's replicate your DNA so that we can make it into RNA, so that we can secrete proteins. Why do I need proteins? Well, let me help you with this. Your insulin is a protein. Most of your enzymes are proteins. All of your receptors are proteins with some carbohydrates. All of your channels are proteins. All of your pumps, including the famous sodium potassium ATPase pump, are proteins. All of your carriers are proteins. The most abundant protein in the blood, albumin, is a protein and without it you will swell like a wildebeest. The second most important protein in your plasma is globulin, another bigger protein. Without it, no coagulation factors, you will bleed to death. No antibodies you will die from infections. No transferrin, which is a protein that carries iron in the blood. Oops, you get iron problems, which can lead to anemia. Also, don't forget that proteins make more than half of your cell membrane. You know how many cells do you have? Like a hundred trillion, gazillion, something like that. Let's take that DNA template and make another template, another copy, synthesis. That DNA replication occurs in the nucleus. Let's start. I start with my double-stranded DNA. The double helix? Yeah, the double helix. Let's unwind the helix and open it up. Who's doing this? Helicase. Helicase is the enzyme that will unwind the double helix. Oh, that's a beautiful name. And then what? I start with 
the origin of replication and I open some replication forks. Next, the forks will keep forking left and right, back and forth, up and down. These lovely two strands that you had are called parent strands because they are the original strand. We will use each of these strands to lay down new daughter strands. Why do you call them daughter? Because they are new. They came from the parent. Who will synthesize the two new daughter strands DNA polymerases. Okay, that's beautiful. Who's gonna help the polymerases? Replisome. What the flip is that? It's a complex of proteins that help with replication. Oh, that makes sense. I feel much better. Let's talk about the difference between bacteria and you. Both of you have double-stranded DNA. However, the bacterial DNA is circular in shape, but your DNA is linear. That's a big difference. Moreover, the bacteria starts one origin of replication, but you starts multiple origins of replication even within the same chromosome. Why? Because you have more genes, because you have more cells, because you need more proteins in your life. You are a more complex organism. Who's gonna unwind the double helix? Helicase in both of you. Who's gonna stabilize the unwound template strand? Because listen to me, the moment you create the gap, i.e. the fork, these lovely nucleotides contain nitrogenous bases. These bases, when they are exposed like this, not contained, but exposed, they are very sticky. They want to bind to something. If they bind to something before you finish, they will ruin your DNA replication. Who's gonna tell them to stop being so sticky? Single-stranded DNA binding proteins. They will stick to those exposed bases and tell them to wait until we finish DNA replication. Since the bacteria have circular DNA, I open a fork and before you know it, I will keep forking this way and this way. But since it's a circle, they will meet each other. And before you know it, we have two DNA molecules instead of one. This is replication. However, in you, as a eukaryote, your DNA is linear as you open it up via multiple origins of replication, this strand will open up and this one will open up. But remember, the two sister chromatids remain connected at the center, at the centromere, as long as we are in the S phase, which is the phase of DNA replication. Later, when you go to the M phase, mitosis, the mitotic spindle will split the centromere into two halves. In the S phase, DNA synthesis, the centromere remains intact. Both sister chromatids remain connected. However, when you reach the M phase, the mitotic spindle will split your centromere into two halves and therefore the two sister chromatids will separate. One will go to each of the two new daughter cells. That's the story of my centromere. In the S phase, it is intact and the two sister chromatids remain connected. However, during the M phase, the centromere is split and the sister chromatids are separated, one to each new daughter cell. Who did that? Mitotic spindle. Made of what? Microtubules. Made of what? Tubulin protein. And just like any other protein, it requires DNA replication, transcription, and translation just to make the tubulin, just to undergo mitosis, just to replicate your cells. Your body is amazing. Two parent strands. I already had those. However, we will use each one as a template to synthesize a new strand. So at the end of the day, the two parent strands remain, but we added two new daughter strands. That's why we say that DNA replication is semi-conservative, because we conserved 50% from the past, and we added 50%, the two new daughter strands. That's why we can call DNA another name. We called it negatively charged. We called it polar. We called it anti-parallel. We called it nucleic acid. We called it possessing complementary base pairing. Now let's call it semi-conservative replicator. 
Let's review. DNA replication occurs in the S phase of the cell cycle. Let's start with double-stranded DNA. Amazing. And then start an origin of replication or many because I'm a human being. Opening those replication forks. Keep forking this way and this way. Thank you so much, Helicase, for unwinding the double helix in both directions. The moment you open up your DNA, those bases are sticky and they want to stick to anything. Who's gonna protect me from this disaster? The answer is single-stranded DNA binding proteins, which serve two functions. Function number one, they prevent the newly separated bases from sticking to something else and ruining the DNA replication. The second function is that they prevent the destruction of DNA by the nasty nuclease enzyme. Why do we call it nuclease? Because it's an enzyme that destroys the nucleus. Why do I care as a DNA? Because DNA is in the nucleus, doofus. That's why it's called nuclease. Thank you. So these single-stranded DNA binding proteins are amazing. Yeah, because they are proteins that bind to the single strand after separation. I get it. What's the first order of business? Add a primer. What the flip is that? Short RNA. About 10 nucleotides, so to speak. How can I make this primer, which is RNA? Primase will make it for you. In which direction? 5 prime to 3 prime. Just like how DNA polymerase works. Next, my favorite part of the video, the super coils. Here is the story. Get your lovely headphones, the ones with wire, not the Bluetooth ones, not your earbuds, the classic ones from the good old days. They are thin and linear. According to the science of topology, a branch of mathematics, if anything is thin and linear, torsional pressure will happen. That's why the moment you put your headphones in your backpack and come back to retrieve them two days later or so, you'll find your headphones entangled together. What the flip? I straightened them out before I put them in the backpack. I swear I did straighten them out. How come they are entangled like this? Torsional pressure, baby. Topology. What do we call these? Positive super coils. Okay. Now, what are you going to do with your headphones now? Well, I gotta use them. So I will disentangle them. How did you do it? You did it via adding negative super coils, which is a technical term for removing the positive super coils or counteracting the positive super coils so that you disentangle and straighten up your headphone wires again. Let me take you back to ancient Greece. What does time and space mean? Let's start with time. Time is called chrono. That's why we talk about chronic diseases, diseases that last for a long time. How about space? Space in Greek is topo. So topo means space? Yeah, because your headphones got entangled in space due to torsional pressure that act upon them in space. By the same flipping token, your DNA has double strands, it is thin, it is long, by the laws of nature, it should entangle like this. If my DNA is entangled like this, hashtag positive super coils, do you think I'll be able to replicate it? No. Do you think I'll be able to transcribe it? No. Do you think I'll be able to translate it into meaningful proteins? Also no. No proteins, no cell division, no cell functions. You are toast. Because your straightened DNA got converted to the evil topoisomer. Isomer in chemistry means similar. Yeah, it is similar. It still contains the same nucleotides and nucleosides. Everything is there. The genetic code is there. It just has a different orientation in space, rendering it useless. So if your DNA got entangled, you are finished. But hi, Medicosis. How come I survived all of these years? Because you have a topoisomerase that will disentangle your DNA, i.e. prevent it from being entangled in the first place. How did it do it? And instead of adding positive supercoils, let's do the opposite. Add negative supercoils, i.e. 
prevent the coiling. But wait, it gets better. Let's make it clinical. Do you want to destroy bacteria? Oh yeah, those uh, disease-causing bacteria. The bad one, of course, I want to punch him in the face. Easy. Inhibit their topoisomerase by giving medications that are topoisomerase inhibitors, such as quinolones, e.g. levofloxacin, moxifloxacin, oxifloxacin, ciprofloxacin, and other antibiotics. By inhibiting their topoisomerase, these bacteria will be left in this state, i.e., entangled. Do you think this bacteria can divide? No. No cell division, the bacteria is toast. Because the lifespan of the bacterium is very short. That's why give the patient a week on those quinolones and boom, the pneumonia is gone. Or the urinary tract infection is gone. Because without replication, the people, I mean the bacteria, perish. This is the beauty of topology microbiology and molecular biology why don't they teach like this in school biochemistry makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about yet today we have doofuses with stethoscopes running around saying oh why do i need to study molecular biology i will be working in the icu at the hospital i am not trying to invent a new drug doofus it's because you work at the icu at the hospital that you need to learn this because if an organism does not possess topoisomerase, then giving quinolone antibiotics to them is pointless, isn't it? To learn more about quinolones and other antibiotics, download my antibiotics course at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. It will teach you about antibacterials, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitic medications. Back to DNA replication. What should I do to my double-stranded DNA? Open it up. Hashtag helicase. And then what? Add primers. Short RNA segments. Who's gonna add them? DNA primase will add the primers. And then what? Who's gonna make the new DNA? The daughter strands. Answer? DNA polymerases. But please pay attention. One of your parent DNAs was 3' prime to 5'. Prime, and the other one was 5' prime to 3'. Prime. Your DNA polymerase, the synthesizer of new DNA, only puts new nucleotides in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, which means it reads from the 3' prime to 5' prime template. It will read this template, 3 to 5, and synthesize the complementary segment, 5' prime to 3', prime, okay? As you see here, the helicase is opening it up this way. Keep opening it up, opening it up, opening it up. And Mr. DNA polymerase is adding the new daughter strand here with a beautiful single stride. Hashtag leading strand. Okay, but we have a problem on the opposite side. This helicase will open up your DNA. It will cruise like a sharp knife in warm butter. As it cruises, it opens up new segments. But remember, your DNA polymerase only works 5' prime to 3'. Prime. So it will start here and go here. And then my helicase will open more. So we'll add another segment. And it will open more. It will add another segment. Why didn't we do it in a single stride just like the leading strand? Because the helicase hasn't opened the entire DNA yet. So we have to put it in fragments. Who discovered these fragments? A famous Japanese scientist named Okazaki. That's why we call them Okazaki fragments. Why does Japan has this flag? Because it's the land of the rising sun. Who is gonna bind and ligate and join these Okazaki fragments together to make a continuous strand? DNA ligase will. Now let's compare between the leading strand and the lagging strand. The leading strand is continuous, one single stride. The lagging strand is fragmented. The leading strand is complementary to the parental 3' prime to 5' prime strand, but the lagging strand is complementary to the 5' prime to 3' prime parent strand. Okay. 
Leading strand is continuous, no need for DNA ligase. How about lagging strand? It needs DNA ligase. I am not saying that the leading strand will never need DNA ligase. It will need DNA ligase as we'll discuss later in the next video on DNA repair. When you try to repair a piece of DNA, of course you will ligate. I'm just trying to keep it simple. Lagging strand of course needs DNA ligase way more than the leading strand. Leading strand because we started at one point will need one primer. This is theoretical. In reality, it needs more than this, but we're keeping it simple. Lagging strand, however, needs many primers. There is a crazy mnemonic that I invented, if you may forgive my language. I was going to say the lagging strand is a boot licker, but I said, let me have some respect for myself and make it an expensive boot. Gucci licker, G with the Gs and L with the L. Lagging is a Gucci licker. Not just that, it's a shattered Gucci liquor. Why? Because it is dependent on others. It's dependent on the DNA ligase. It will lick its boot and it's dependent on multiple primers, which means multiple primases. It will lick their boot. Now our comparison table is getting longer. Enzyme needed to make the primer, which is RNA. In the prokaryotes, it's primase. In the eukaryotes, also primase. The enzyme needed to synthesize DNA, the new daughter strands. In prokaryotes, it's DNA polymerases. In eukaryotes, DNA polymerases. But which polymerase? I am glad you asked. If you want to synthesize new DNA, which are the daughter strands, in prokaryotes, we're using DNA polymerase 3. In eukaryotes, you're using DNA polymerases alpha, delta, and epsilon. Let's add some mnemonic. Remember that making new DNA means synthesizing new nucleotides. And remember, the nucleotide is a triad, a trio of sugar, nitrogenous base, and phosphate, so nucleotide three components. That's why we have DNA polymerase three, and we have three different DNA polymerases in humans. What are those three DNA polymerases? Alpha, delta, epsilon. Mnemonic, add new DNA. This delta, you can pronounce it like a D, and we are adding new DNA. Next, if you want to remove the RNA primer, in either one, we're using 5' prime to 3' prime exonuclease. Let me remind you of something. Remember that we added the primer via primase in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. So it makes sense to remove it by going in the same direction. 5' prime to 3' prime exonuclease. Also remember that the DNA polymerases added DNA in the 5' prime to 3' prime. So it all makes sense. We always go from the 5' prime to 3' prime. Whether you are making new DNA, new primer, or removing a primer. However, this 5' prime, 3' prime exonuclease enzyme has different names in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. In prokaryotes, we call it DNA polymerase 1. In eukaryotes, it's the RNase H because it's an enzyme that's removing RNA. Why do they call it H? Maybe it's alphabetical, but a mnemonic is Halle in German means lighter. When you make it lighter, you're removing stuff. I am removing the RNA to make it lighter. Do you have a mnemonic for the DNA polymerase one? Yeah, easy. Remember, it's always harder to build up than to tear down. Tearing someone down is easy. Building up people is different. That's why tearing down took just DNA polymerase 1. But building up requires 3. That's how I remember it. I know it's weird. Next, after removing the primer, which is RNA, how can I replace this RNA with DNA? Well, DNA polymerase 1 again and DNA polymerase delta here. How do I remember it? Delta in Greek looks like S in English. So this is the enzyme that will swap DNA for RNA, meaning substitute DNA for RNA, i.e. remove the RNA, throw it in the trash, and add DNA instead. Let's look at it in a different way. Let's talk about the prokaryotes alone and then the eukaryotes alone. 
First, DNA polymerases in prokaryotes. We have DNA polymerase 1, 2, and 3. Forget 2, it's not important for your exam. Just focus on 1 and 3. DNA polymerase 1, it's easier to tear down. After you tear down that RNA, replace it with DNA. Oh, so it has two functions. Yes, it has two functions in prokaryotes. And then you build up with DNA polymerase 3, synthesizes new DNA. Amazing, we're done. Next, eukaryotes, gazillion polymerases. Let's just focus on five. These are not the only one, there is more. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon. I made a mistake here. I should have written them as alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon. I made a mistake, I apologize. My proofreading mechanisms are not as robust as my DNA ones. More on that in the next video. DNA polymerases alpha, delta, and epsilon will add new DNA, i.e. DNA synthesis. DNA polymerases beta and epsilon will help us repair the DNA, which is the topic of the next video. DNA polymerase gamma replicates not the nuclear DNA of your nucleus, the mitochondrial DNA of your mitochondria. Remember that you inherited the mitochondrial DNA only from your mother. It's purely maternal, not paternal. Mnemonic gamma gaga. Imagine that Lady Gaga is your mama, mitochondrial DNA. Honestly, I would rather throw a viper down my shirt than have Lady Gaga as my mom. Easy, medicosis, chill down. We're done with DNA replication. Just don't forget that we cannot replicate the last part. We cannot extend the replication all the way to the end of the chromosome. That's why we have telomeres. Without telomerase, your telomeres will keep shortening and shortening and shortening, and you grow old, not just as a person, as a cell. And the cell that is getting senescent is going to die. Thankfully, you have telomerase as a eukaryote, but prokaryotes do not. Their lifespan is not that long, they do not need it anyway. And the comparison table is getting longer. Who's gonna join my Okazaki fragments DNA ligase, whether it's prokaryotes or eukaryotes? Who's gonna remove the positive supercoils, i.e. add negative supercoils DNA topoisomerases? Next, who's gonna synthesize the telomeres to prevent the shortening of the telomeres? Well, in eukaryotes, it's the telomerase. In prokaryotes, there is nothing. It does not apply there. So we can write NA here, just like Bank of America. If you want to be an excellent student, bring a piece of paper and draw this table from scratch, from memory, without looking. You're allowed to copy this. You can look while copying the point of comparison. And do the same thing for this second table, from scratch, on paper. Finally, some pearls for the pros. DNA replication took place in the S phase of the cell cycle. Cancer is uncontrolled replication of your cells due to errors or mutation. Chemotherapy is the opposite. Chemotherapy is trying to treat cancer by inhibiting replication of your DNA. Some antibacterials and antivirals will try to kill bacteria or kill viruses by inhibiting their DNA, not yours. To learn more about oncology, i.e. cancer, and the anti-cancer pharmaceuticals and their mechanisms, download my anti-cancer pharmacology course. To learn how your beautiful kidneys work, download my renal physiology course. Here is a question for you. Would you consider the cells of your kidney as labile cells, stable cells, or quiescent cells? Let me know the answer in the comment section. In the meanwhile, please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.